Okay guys, if you're new here, we just spent the last 45 days building a boat from scratch. With the help of Chesapeake Lightcraft, of course, we then spent about a week training for an event that most people spend a year training for. Oh yeah! And tomorrow, we are heading over to Tampa to compete in the Everglades Challenge. In case you missed it, the Everglades Challenge is a 300 mile unsupported expedition race for kayaks, canoes, and small boats. We will be traveling from Tampa Bay down the west coast of Florida, through the Everglades, trying to avoid pythons and gators, and then across Florida Bay to the finish in Key Largo. Unsupported means that there are no safety boats or support crew to help you along the race. Expedition style means we need to be able to carry everything we need to survive. That includes shelter, food, water, safety equipment for the duration of the race. So we are completely on our own, and we have to finish the event by the cutoff, which is eight days. So if the cutoff is eight days, we have to travel about 40 miles a day, and we've been paddling an average of about three knots. So if there's no wind, that would have us paddling over 13 hours a day. Pray for wind. Are you feeling strong? <laughs> Wish us luck. Wish us luck. Today's video is sponsored by Keen. Keen sandals and boots are shoes we have been using, abusing, and loving for many years now. They have helped us traverse many waterfall hikes all throughout the Caribbean, have protected our feet on rocky shores, helped us climb trees to fetch us back, and have hiked hundreds of miles all across the country from the Badlands of the Dakotas to the San Juan Islands in Washington, and many places in between. Keen was founded 20 years ago, not as a brand or product, but as a movement, an effort out of the gate to make outside accessible to all. This movement had an icon, their original hybrid sandal, part sandal part boot, all adventure. Fitting enough, this sandal was actually designed by a sailor who wanted a sandal but didn't want to risk stubbing his toe on all the obstacles that lay on the deck of the sailboat. We are proud to wear Keens on our adventures not only because they are great shoes but because they have donated millions to people in need, millions protecting our beloved outdoors, and are always working on making products that have as little impact on the environment as possible. For our Florida friends out there, if you shop for a pair of Keens at Bill Jackson's from now until June 30th, you will receive 10% off and a free buff. Make sure you let them know Tula sent you. Thanks for watching. Officially on the road, loaded with the boat in the back. We are officially in Fort Zone Park for check-in day, inspection day. It's Friday, race starts tomorrow, 10 a.m. we're going off. We have arrived, we have to do our very first thing. They gotta check our PFDs and our paperwork. That's what we're gonna go do now. Guys, we passed. We passed inspection. And I think we passed with flying colors. <laughs> I did the whole like showing all of our gear and safety equipment and Billy showed the guy our whole briefing system. Um, he had a couple questions about just where our stuff was organized and I just showed them all and explained everything we had and check, 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 check. Um, how did it go for you? Good. Really good. I mean, straightforward. I honestly had to explain less and show less than I thought, but you know, he just wanted to understand our reefing system worked and yeah, very straightforward. They issued a optional plan B. An optional plan B is when you have the option to not start at the original starting location, which is Fort DeSoto, because uh, conditions are gonna be a little nasty. Uh, today it was 25 to 30 something knots. It was straight on shore, just nasty conditions. Like breaking wave, just dumping on the beach. And tomorrow it's gonna be a little bit less. It'll be hopefully 15 to 20 knots out of the southwest, so a little bit better, but rough enough. And so they're allowing people to take a plan B, meaning they can start anywhere basically between here and the first checkpoint or they can start at the original starting location if they're comfortable doing that and there was a couple boats doing that definitely Us, and i give you guys tons of credit whoever's doing that being our first everglades challenge and not having not tested the boat as extensively as we would have liked are going to take the optional plan b we haven't figured out exactly where that is yet right i now. would like to just start on the other side of tampa bay just get through all that nasty stuff we only skip a few miles across Tampa Bay and then start from there. Honestly, just take as, as little distance as we can off the race. Um, just enough to get out of the really, really nasty stuff that could potentially like cause major problems in the beginning of the race. I think we'll be fine. We'll let you know when we make a decision. Like that. That's good. Stay right here. Yeah. Um, 
John Harris from Chesapeake Lightcraft was here last night till like 10 p.m. trying to just help us get all the last minute stuff done. With all our extra weight, we were having a little bit of flooding issue in this Hobie Mirage Drive well. Him and Jay, the other designer, were racking their brains trying to help us come up with a quick solution. They CNC cut this little wooden collar in here and we screwed in this like old sail bag as a skirt to help uh, just block all the any extra water coming over the top of the well, just help block it and funnel it back into the well. Hasn't been tested yet, but we'll see today. Yeah. <laughs> so I put this bungee here so that when your pedal drives are in and you want them to go into that shallow position, you put this one forward, or probably either one forward, and you just wrap it around the end. There's like a little clip on the end, so you just wrap it around the end and that'll just hold your your pedal forward. It's enough movement where you can pedal and it's just kind of a loose skirt okay. and the same thing here And even when the sailing plug is in same same deal really we shall see if it works <laughs> Okay, if I put this in there Oh, I don't think so. Why would it explode? It's like aerosol and it's gonna be really hot. Nah, I don't think so Okay Okay, so for plan B, we did decide to do Anna Marie Island. We're on a place called, what, Kingfish Boat Ramp. And we decided that we're doing this because it's a hard race. We want it to be a hard race. We're going on the south side of Tampa Bay. We're taking advantage of the plan B, but we're as north as we can be. So you can see like the Skyway Bridge that we would have gone past yeah. in the distance. And, and that's basically on the other side of that is basically where we would have started. So we're just getting past that really rough section and just kind of saving ourselves some potential breakage or swamping and starting a little bit down the course but not a ton down the course. And we have a ton of other people here with us. We weren't really expecting it but we have a TI, a Hopi over here and then I think one other boat. That it's like a in. yeah like a canoe, a decked canoe or something down there. So we'll have a little crew. Here's our downline for the rudder. Pull this down, the rudder comes down. And then we got a little cam cleat up here for it. One of our patrons who've done this race before, Jim, gave us this awesome idea. There's a ton of shallow areas. One of the biggest things that have installed these boats is they break their rudders because they hit a shallow spot and just break them. So he suggested putting a bungee on your downline so we can have our bungee in this cam cleat. So if we do hit something, it just kind of springs. All right, launching. Ready to go. What time is it? How many more minutes we got? It is 9.48. Oh, we're ready, I think. I mean, first case. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Pedal, pedal, pedal. For our meals, we have breakfast. We have our jet boil, so Billy can have his coffee, and we also can boil water for oatmeal. So we have oatmeal for about seven mornings. Then we have some dried fruit to put in our oatmeal. Some protein bars for snacks. For lunch, I did like little packets of like tuna and chicken salad that are in the can, so they won't go bad. For dinner, we have freeze dried meal. And I packed some dessert of M&M's. Uh, <laughs> we'll definitely be ready for some uh, yummy food when we get done. Do you want to go for a little paddle real quick? Test it out? We only have five minutes. Well, all right. So go, we're going. There's no tweaking now. Good luck, everyone! I'm going to have you take your dock line off, Sierra, and then put that rudder down. Perfect. Oh, do you want to like keep it sword? or leave it? Yeah, we'll probably keep it yeah. just in case. Yeah, you may need to last. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Hopefully. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Get your hat on.
<laughs> Does it feel like all the YouTube videos we've watched? Bye, I love you! my friends the everglades challenge 2023 has begun <laughs> there's a uh, red tide so there's dead fish everywhere in the water it was that a red red a red drum yeah the huge red drum we just passed like this big just dead there's one there's one All right, I got a sail. Let me bear away and get up to sailing. <coughs> Keep going. Sarasota Bay finally kind of tacking in the tight channels back there between Tampa Bay and Sarasota Bay just dealing with like light fickle winds in the lee of, of the barrier island over there but definitely a solid southwest breeze now and just uh, pretty much close hauled or close reaching depending on like the gusts that come through. When we get into areas where there's just dead fish everywhere we have like little coughing attacks but we haven't had that in a while so. Yeah Sarasota Bay seems be cleaner. Little, maybe it's just bigger and they're all in one spot but we see all of the people that are racing at the race we did two years ago. Yeah the Corsair Nationals is going on right now just in front of us so we should be passing right through them. We started with two Hobie tandem miles. They had their stuff ready and when we pushed off we had to like turn into the wind and raise the sails and they like took off flying and we haven't seen them in a long time so I don't know if they're like way ahead of us or if they stopped and pulled off somewhere to wait for the current or they just are so much faster but it was cool to be with other people at the start. I'm, I'm really hoping this boat's faster than those uh, Hobie Tandem Islands. I like those boats a lot. They seem super functional, but I'm hoping we're a little bit faster than them. It'll be very interesting to see uh, into the wind versus downwind as well. I think it'd be a good comparison. Look at this view, man. This looks beautiful. First little break. We just pulled over to this island here just south of Sarasota Bay. How was it so far? Good, I just realized our tracker wasn't tracking, but I just turned it on. Why wasn't it tracking? Because I read online that with this one, all you have to do is turn it on and it starts tracking. But then I got messages from our family saying they couldn't see us, so. Apparently I have to hold the button for like 10 seconds and then it will start. So now it started. 
we just had someone, two person kayak team just go by us and then our other Kobe TIs are right in front of us. So we gotta go catch them. 15 miles down, another 30 today to checkpoint one, hopefully. I just picked up these little like lunch on the run things, these two tuna salad snacks and I got a couple chicken salad snacks. So that's our lunch for the next six days. Back out we go. Check this out, our local, our friend at a local paddleboard shop had this demo paddle. Look how funky it looks. I saw it on their website first online. I was like, what the heck? That's such a weird camera angle. But sure enough, that's the shape of the paddle. He let me borrow it and it worked really well. So thanks, Jeremy. Blue line, quick blade. All right, so we had some nice wind. We're getting into a section now where it is pretty dang skinny and we are already having to tack a bit, not through Sarasota Bay too much at all, which is awesome. So now everything from here on down is pretty skinny until we get to like, what's the Northern Island, Captiva, Sanibel? You know, down there a little bit, the bay opens up a bit. So we're just gonna paddle instead of trying to sail in these and tack in these tight channels. And the outside still has some leftover nasty, uh, not really, I mean, it's like three foot swell, but three foot at like six second interval, just uncomfortable and the wind's dying throughout the day anyway so we're not gonna be able to get a great sailing in there especially with that swell just kind of beating into it and we're just gonna paddle and i don't know how long we're gonna paddle for probably until we get really tired because we got a ways to go are we paddling for 30 miles i don't know we have to be at 30 miles by i think 10 a.m tomorrow so it's like what time is it 3 30 p.m and we have to be 30 miles from where we are now by 10 a.m <coughs> So there's red tide it cleared up a little bit in Sarasota Bay, but it's getting worse again. It's really bad in the southern part of Sarasota Bay. You can see just dead fish everywhere, everywhere. Pretty sad. And honestly, every time a boat goes by, because their wake kind of just disturbs the water and aerates the water, we start coughing. So definitely some airborne uh, stuff from this red tide. It's nasty. I'm, yeah, it sucks. Boat's performing well. Tweaks we made with John yesterday are really nice and nothing broke so far. We got a little bit of an angle to sail, kind of. So see our while I'm getting this ready, just go this way. Just get a nut, a little more of an angle. Ugh. Paddling and pedaling is hard and we're gonna be doing a lot of it. So we're gonna try to motor sail right now, AKA pedal pedal sail but with the sail so it's easier. And now we're motor sailing. <laughs> I'm paddling too when it when it dies down. So there's a spot called Little Sarasota Bay, actually. Just didn't look like on the chart it'd be this open. Definitely open enough to get a nice little fetch, nice little angle of breeze. So worth it. Definitely worth it having to sail back up. Yeah, baby. I don't know. A little osprey up there. Super calm motor sailing. Pedal sailing. Pedal paddle sailing. Good to have the sail up. <coughs> kind of doing something here and there. How you doing back there? <coughs> That's a red tide air. It's gonna be a long race. <laughs> Still have about seven more hours. Adventure. Are we averaging three knots? I don't know. You have it. I'm not even looking. We got a ways to go before checkpoint one. It's taken definitely longer than I thought. <laughs> it's only day one. All right. I'll check in with you guys later if something interesting happens. But look at this view. dark we made it to the Venice Canal we're still motor sailing this time I'm on the pedals Sierra finally let me try her pedals she never lets me try her pedals some sort of baseball field right there next to the Venice Canal That's football. that one looks curved the one in front of it that one looks like baseball 
as you can tell, we don't follow sports. We have two Hobie Tenem Islands sailing in front of us, seeing if we could catch up to them. They're just tacking around in light wind. I'm really curious if they're using their pedals or not, because if they're not and they're just sailing, that is very impressive. So I'm not sure we're gonna stop tonight. We might stop at the end of this canal, camp out. That's like 13 miles, I believe, something from the checkpoint, which we have to hit tomorrow by, I, we believe 10 a.m., we're not sure. We might stop there or we might keep going. I think we have the tide with us. We just passed Venice Inlet. We were against it, approaching Venice Inlet. And then as we got away from it, I think we picked up the incoming tide. So definitely flying along here. Okay, we are pulled up to a sandy beach right at the end of the Venice Canal. We have set up our tent. The boat is pulled up and secured on the beach. And Billy is making dinner. It's about 10 p.m. We're about 12 miles away from our checkpoint, but 12 miles could be four hours and we were tired. We hadn't really eaten anything all day, so we decided to stop. There's our tent and our kitchen. All right, woke up at 5 a.m. this morning. Just had a little bit of oatmeal for breakfast and some camp coffee. Just securing everything, getting ready for a paddle. Got to get there by, I think we clarified it's noon, not 10 a.m. So by noon, I think we should be well ahead of schedule. Long paddling day. It's just getting light out now. Don't quite see the sun yet, but beautiful, calm morning. We see a bridge up ahead and we hear the gulf breaking on the other side. Probably sounds bigger than it is, but definitely makes us happy that we didn't go outside yesterday. Three foot at like a five to six second interval. Beating into that would just be a nightmare. Or even paddling into that even worse. If we're lucky, I don't know how we'll get a breeze today, but if we're lucky, we get some sort of push from the wind. But other than that, we're just going to be paddling all day yesterday. Paddled light or paddle sailed 30 miles yesterday, but in uh, VMG uh, 27 miles. So maybe we paddle sailed like 27 miles to our destination, but including tacking and everything like that, 30 miles. We caught up to two Tandem Islands yesterday, right past the Venice Inlet in the Venice Canal. You could see their lights only and it was super calm and they were just like tacking back and forth in the canal because the wind was kind of against us. And I was so curious if they were uh, pedal sailing or, or just sailing. But yeah, sure enough, they were definitely pedal, pedal sailing. Just kind of tacking, just enough to keep their, their sail filled on, on both sides so they weren't just luffing directly into the wind. But sure enough, like that's the technique that we kind of got into and it worked pretty well especially with the current pushing with us so it's pretty cool we kind of followed them for a few miles and then pulled off to the to the side where we found a little campsite for the night I made some of our dehydrated meals which actually tasted pretty good the mexican rice stuff was a little too sweet but the stroganoff was amazing a little hard though i should have cooked it a little longer i don't know i slept pretty well but sierra had a rough night sleeping she was coughing all night just from this red tide that's definitely just atomizing in the surf and then kind of blowing over directly towards where we were I mean, both of us were coughing in the morning so and no dead fish this morning hopefully this red tide stuff gets better as we go south but i'm not sure all right maybe uh 10 more miles or something check point one You can see his whole head. Oh, it's a baby feeding. How cool is that? So cool, I've never seen that before. You think it's a baby feeding? Yeah, I think that's what it looks like. A little baby and a mommy. 
onwards. Checkpoint one. We're here. Right. Cape Hayes Marina. How are y'all? Good. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, we made it to checkpoint one. We had our snack. We charged our battery with our little solar panel here. Everything got a little boost. We stretched our knees, our legs, our backs. Went to the bathroom and now we are taking off again. They have a cool little setup here where we can fill up with water, go to the bathroom, and then a lot of the people here have their little tents set up and everything. I'll, uh... All right, we're off. Just left checkpoint one. Okay, I think we got the greatest compliment we could get at that checkpoint. So Chief, he's like the leader of the water tribe, the person that runs this race. And he said our boat is his favorite boat. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> he said he wants to build one. Are you honored? Honored. <laughs> Here we go, 200 and something miles to go. Some wide open bay, beautiful reaching conditions. Basically on a, almost on a beam reach right now. Just cruising along, so much easier than paddling. And it's probably around 12 knots. Absolutely perfect. And I think later on today, it's supposed to clock around, come from behind us. Hopefully the, the wind uh, speed stays, you know, up above 10 knots, especially as it comes to clocks around behind us. conditions out right now. How is it to what you expected so far? It's pretty similar to what I expected like in general. I, I'm the one that did all like the reading and the research and like the planning. Billy was the one doing all the like making sure the boat was ready. They made it like it is so serious. They made it seem so serious but it also seemed like everyone was like very serious people but everyone's so nice like so kind and so supportive. That's a funny little, not what I was expecting, but super grateful for. It's really the best case scenario. They probably want, like, it's good that it seemed yeah, they very serious. Yeah, they make sure you're prepared and weed out anyone who's not prepared. Okay, I'm off for a little bit. Billy is on. Cabbage Key right now. Two years ago, we came and anchored and had pretty tasty cheeseburgers right there. Unfortunately, we cannot stop this time. I mean, I guess we could if you wanted. You want to stop? I do, but honestly, it's pretty crowded. It's a little too, too touristy for our taste. Let's and there's ahead. a boat up here we're trying to catch. Yeah, we got to take advantage of this wind while it's here. Okay, we had a kayaker with a little sail just come up from, they were hugging the coast. Now they just took a little path right in front of us. So, wow, I give these guys tons of credit. Would you ever want to do that? What, kayak? Oh yeah. my God, a long way. At least that guy's got a little mini sail. The wind switched on us and we're also turning a bit. So we have straight downwind breeze and it is so much fun. We're catching some little, little bumps and just surfing them. Yeah, we're about to jive here actually. 
I love it when it's like this. It's super engaging and rewarding when you catch one. We're like right next to Fort Myers Beach. There was like a little um, town or county park, but it's a temporarily closed. I'm assuming it's because the hurricane, there's like tons of trash all around. So we figured nobody would be around here to tell us we couldn't stay. However, we got here, it was already dark. There's dead fish everywhere. The tide was coming up pretty quickly. We had a ferry wake go by and almost like swamp the tent. But besides that, we did sleep pretty good. It's like 6 a.m. now. We're hoping to ride the little current out this little cut and then go into the ocean. We're the Gulf. Cruise on down for a couple hours. For breakfast, we are snacking on some oatmeal in our collapsible bowls. And let me show you some of our dead fish. <laughs> some of them are crazy looking too. They're like snake-like. These are like all over. the area that got um, destroyed by the most recent hurricane and you can see the evidence is everywhere like just garbage all over this beach I'm staring at a huge like construction dumpster right there or a commercial dumpster or whatever pretty sad lots of lots of mangrove destruction stuff like that as well Beautiful downwind sailing. It was so nice having the wind. First, just beam reaching all day, and, and then uh, a lot of downwind sailing the rest of the afternoon was just amazing. Doing all that paddling in the beginning, especially yesterday morning and the evening before, just really makes us appreciate anything faster than paddling speed, or like even paddling speed, not paddling. Like, so we're doing more than three knots, like sailing, then it's totally worth it. and amazing yeah Sierra Sierra said it really makes us appreciate all these strictly paddlers who are doing this race the one or two stand-up paddle boarders and like a bunch of kayakers and they're just paddling the whole thing man yeah give them a lot of credit so the wind forecast for today was supposed to be light offshore through most of the morning we're actually getting much more north than I thought it was gonna be I thought it was gonna be a little more east but that's fine light downwind sailing beautiful conditions Sierra wants something to do so she just put the pillow drive in i'm making a difference not making a difference. and she's making a difference making us go fast so yeah the plan for today well first off i'm super happy we were just sailing today instead of uh, having to paddle pedal this morning around three knots dead downwind this afternoon the wind's supposed to shift a little more out of the northwest will be broad reaching and supposed to pick up a little so we should gain a bunch of speed in that when the wind shifts to that direction that speed Cape Romano Shoals, which is like a set of just really shallow shoals out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I'm sure these waves would be breaking on them just a few feet deep, a foot or two deep in spots. So we can decide to like kind of turn in coming up and like take the inside inside route or keep it up and go around the shoals. And I'm kind of leaning towards that depending how far it is because we are having an absolute blast 
surfing these swells. It is perfect downwind, broad reach downwind conditions. Just so much fun. I bet we'll get a surf right here. And we're just able to build up a little speed and then turn down on these waves and, and surf. And I'm soaking wet because once in a while we get a wave cresting like right here I'll just kind of break right into my lap. So we're, I'm bailing a little bit here. But uh, we're going to decide here coming up soon. And our checkpoint two is not that far away. At this point probably like 20 miles. 20 miles from Marco Island. Checking off miles. But we did hit a giant milestone today. Probably about an hour ago. We are more than Halfway done with the Everglades Challenge. And we saw a monster sea turtle. So the sea turtle was definitely the coolest thing we've seen so far. At the beginning of the day, oh, we were just seeing so many dead fish. Like the fish I'm seeing are giant, giant redfish, just like floating on top and then tons of like little bait fish too. But just seeing those giant redfish just floating dead is so sad. We haven't seen that in a while, so that's nice. Uh, down here, I haven't seen any really at all, but. Can you believe we slept on a beach filled with dead fish? Yeah, gross. I didn't want to tell you, but there was a maggot on your toothbrush this morning. What? While Billy was like finishing the tweaking of the boat, I was doing all like the research to where all the spots we can stop each night. I was using Navionics, Google Earth, and articles that I had read about this challenge to figure out plot some optional points because we never know how far we're going to make it in a day. One of our options for tonight used to be used. It's one of the first islands that you can camp at in Everglades National Park. Clicked on the little thing on Navionics that gives you the reviews and it said this looked like a super promising spot. We enjoyed it. However, in the morning we noticed that a python had crawled through the porthole on the boat and was in our boat in the morning. So, ooh, I don't know if I can handle that. And then I did some more research and it looked like the National Park no longer recommends you camping there. Like it's temporarily closed as one of their camping spots. I don't know if it's because of this. Like you can't even get a permit to camp there right now. And we also had a bunch of people said that in past years, this island, I'm pretty sure it's called Picnic Island, was the island known for you pull up at the end of the day and the raccoons just flood to your boat because they're looking for fresh water. Because if you're coming from the inside, there's like fresh water spray on your kayak or your sailboat or whatever. But now those raccoons are no longer because they became breakfast, lunch, and dinner for all of the pythons. Are you planning on stopping at Picnic Island tonight? Not if we don't have to. <laughs> so I did go online and I got our Everglades National Park permit and I reserved two campsites. Just kind of trying to guesstimate where we would get to when and we're kind of, we're on a pretty good route today. Like if we had made better progress yesterday and the day before, we definitely would have made it. Made it. But I think we're not gonna quite get to where we wanted to go. We do have the permit to enter the, the wilderness permit. So maybe we'll just stop on one of the earlier islands and hopefully that will be okay. The people that run the race said, they're definitely telling you not to do that. But if you get in a predicament, is anyone gonna catch you? And if you hand over your permit and say, I just didn't quite make it, are they gonna make you leave? I don't know. So, do as we say, not as we do. But if we have to do it, we will do it. We're getting such good surfs here. Oh, missed that one. Long surfs. We're starting to be able to connect the waves pretty good. Turn into the wind a little bit before you lose all your speed and keep your apparent speed up and then be able to turn turn down onto the next wave. Do you have to take out? Uh, maybe a gallon every like 10 minutes. Is that from waves or from the dry? A little more so all at once when these waves are cresting and dumping right, right into here.
try to block you guys out of the wind. Hopefully you can hear me. Crazy Russian, that's the guy's tribe name. The only guy in a proa in this race. A proa is like a outrigger, a single outrigger canoe, except instead of tacking, it shunts, and it's like symmetrical on both ends. Uh, hard to explain. Just pulled into Indian Key just to take a quick little break, maybe wait for the tide to switch a little, and then we're gonna go in towards checkpoint two. A freaking exciting day, exciting ending. We almost like broached on a jibe, basically just surfing all day long. So Sierra's breaking down camp right now. Here's our camp set up. We have our little Dakota lithium power pack and a foldable solar panel we've been using. Just to keep our lights topped up, our phones topped up. We use our charts on our phones mostly. We have like a Garmin with uh, batteries as backup. And we have some backup lights with AA batteries as well. I think a lot of people do this race without like a power pack or recharging stuff. They just use like removable AA or AAA batteries or whatever. And we could have gotten away with that as well, but we're also trying to film a lot of this. So we're filming with our phone and with a bunch of GoPros that we're also trying to keep uh, charged. That little solar panel and power pack has been working awesome so far and we got it cranking this morning um just make sure we're topped off so last night we made it to checkpoint two we stopped at a place called indian key at about 7 p.m for like an hour we made dinner and changed into, into some warmer clothes because we were soaking wet and then made our way to checkpoint two and checkpoint two is a spot where it's like super muddy and it's like up through the mangroves and the current can rip in there so you really want to time it on a when you're going in incoming to high and then kind of ride out the outgoing um, so you're not fighting it the whole time we made it there at like 10 30 we signed in to the checkpoint book. yeah yeah and we slept until four uh three we slept until three packed everything up got on out of there and then we just to catch that outgoing tide yep and then we stopped at a place called rabbit key at about what time did we get here? Six? And we woke up at 8.30 a.m. today, and now we're packing up camp, making breakfast, and getting on the move. So, so that checkpoint, too, is, like, tucked back. Like, we're, like, kind of on the gulf right now. This little island, like, kind of one of the last islands on the little gulf or Gullivan's Bay or whatever. Um, that checkpoint, too, is, like, tucked back what seems to be, like, the Everglades. Like, it's tucked back in there and the mangroves and everything. They say it's impassable to get there at low tide, especially with a boat like ours that requires at least, like, I don't know, 10 inches of water, plus more with the rudder down. We made sure we got out of there while we still had a high outgoing tide. And now we're just, ca we caught up on some sleep and I'm just cooking up some breakfast and Sierra's breaking down camp. There's the boat over there stuck in the mud because the tide's still pretty low. On the move. Sierra steering. I'm just chilling. Maybe trimming the sail if I have to. And we're just working our way downwind. Pretty light right now, but it's definitely going to pick up from our beam a little later this afternoon. Hopefully, it's not too strong, not too much on our beam. It'd be better on our quarter. And if it does get strong and on our beam, hopefully, we could just make it far before it gets kind of too rough. If it gets too bad on our beam, too strong, and we don't feel comfortable out here, we'll just turn to port and go into one of these entrances that I have marked out on our chart. I'll give you a tour of my little cubby up here. So we got our reefing lines here. We have full sail out right now, so they're just kind of loosely wrapped around the cleat so they don't sag. And we have our halyard just resting on our cleat right there. That's our halyard. Just a little dock utility line there. And I have that strapped up under there. There's our downhaul. 
We got our canes tucked away down there until we get to a muddy or shelly beach. Then I put them on and walk the boat in in those. Some water and then these hanging baskets. So I have a bar and a little chicken salad kit lunch for later. Nav light, mantis headlamp in there. And just some odds and ends, bungees and stuff. And then on this side, glasses, sunblock, and then my phone that we've been using for navigation. And then under my seat, I have our bailing container. Lots of room up back under the seat. Sometimes I put my hat under there. But right now, Sierra's wearing it. A lot of people use like a waterproof GPS for navigation and we have one of those. We have our Garmin handheld, but we prefer our phones and tablets and stuff and Navionics. And that's what we've been using for years and years and years. So that's what we're most comfortable with. So we just got these waterproof cases for our phones and it's been working really well. Just have to have a way to charge them back up. Slow and steady. All right, the wind is starting to fill in now. Sarah's doing a great job steering us downwind, getting some surfs in. Probably, I don't know, 12 to 15 knots at the moment. Probably like 30 miles from where we really, 30 or 40 really, from where we'd really like to go. But right now we're broad reaching and it's going, going good. All right, the wind completely filled in now. Lucky enough for us, we kept offshore enough in the beginning when it was light and out of the north that we're able to keep the wind on our quarter and really do a ton of surfing again today. And honestly, it's even better today because I'm starting to be able to connect wave, keep the speed up to the next wave, surf the wave, keep the speed up to the next wave. And it is just so much fun. It's probably 15 to 20 knots right now. One reef in the sail and just absolutely perfect. So much fun, how you doing? I'm very moist. <laughs> Just absolutely. I'm, I'm very moist too. <laughs> absolutely drenched. When I was reading all about this race, they said the number one thing you have to be careful of is hypothermia. And they're going to be like, you're going to think we're full of crap because you know, y'all live in Florida and you know how hot it is. We saw the other day, as soon as the sun goes down and you're just wet and it's windy, it gets cold so fast. So that's like one of the things we had to make sure of today that we get in fast enough before it gets dark because we can't really open our hatch because this is where all of our like batteries and stuff are. So yeah, just trying to make it <laughs> before we get too cold and in the US there aren't many toilets that have boudets, but if you want to feel like you're sitting on a boudet, just sit on the trampoline here. Here we go. Oh yeah. Get on a big one. But stay in control, please. There we go. I think. Everything's right past this tree. It looks like there's more like sandy area. Yeah. Ooh. Today was a long day, but we covered some ground and we didn't see one other boat the entire time. Okay guys, we are at our final campsite before we reach checkpoint number three. We're about eight and a half miles away. We're at East Cape. I magnificently planned perfectly um, and I reserved this before we even left just assuming we would do about 40 miles a day. We missed the campsite I reserved yesterday but we made this one for the exact date and time that we had it reserved for. We have a beautiful full moon and it is just us here and what looked to be like a python slither down the beach so hopefully it was just someone dragging a stick. Feeling good. Billings making us a dinner. And What's for dinner? Okay, so? We are having some mountain house mac and cheese. Having some Mountain House creamy macaroni cheese and some 
Huh? And some peak beef stroganoff all made on our jet boil. It's been working great so far. Boat tied up to a tree over there, pulled way up and tied off. All of our clothes are hanging on the tree to hopefully dry because we got drenched today. Tomorrow morning we'll wake up, make our way to checkpoint number three. Check in quick. We've heard maybe that there's some like microwavable cheeseburgers that we have to stop and get. So maybe we'll stop and get that. And then we are about hopefully just one day away from the finish. Okay, we woke up at 5 a.m. this morning and we are off. We went to bed at like 9. Woke up at 5. Um, had the full moon all night long and now we're gonna have a beautiful sunrise. And we have about, I don't know, seven miles to go till checkpoint number three. I can see the full moon right behind you. We had a nice little shark zoomed in sandbar this morning. So, it's big. so far, we have seen. Lots of dead stuff, but uh, turtles, manatees, baby manatees, baby uh, manatee, um, more turtles, white pelicans, which are always cool, manta jumped out of the air, spotted eagle ray jumped out of the air, giant jack jumped out of the air. What else do we see? Osprey and baby osprey. My question is, actually flamingos in flamingo. Already going north. Yeah, and the heart's gonna pick it up. It's gonna be yeah, and Hey, we got all of our charging going on. Trying to dry all of our clothes. They have a marina store over here. Breakfast burritos and coffee. Probably the, this is my second breakfast burrito. The best one I've ever had in my life, I think. Real coffee with cream. Sierra's just getting changed. We're gonna go check in with the checkpoint captain over here and just chat with him and, and see what he has to say about going through Florida Bay. If he's got any advice or recommendations. All right, we just left checkpoint three here in Flamingo in the Everglades. The guys here were super helpful and everyone is always super, super nice. An hour and a half, it's 11, we got in at 9.30. And now we're back out because the wind is supposed to start picking up from the east, basically later today, but then into tomorrow, it's supposed to be hard from the east. So honestly, we might finish today if we can. We're gonna get as much east as we can. It lightened way up from, uh, from this morning, even from an hour and a half ago when we first got in, it really lightened up. Gonna start picking, and look how much the tide went out. I don't know if you guys can see this, but all these, it's exposed now. More importantly, look at how cool these white pelicans are. White pelicans everywhere. Eating. Yeah, what do you think they're eating down there? They're eating in the mud. Like worms or something? Digging with their beaks. Are those flamingos? I see something red way down there. No, it's a boat or something. There weren't any flamingos on the things in the gift shop, so I'm assuming there's no flamingos here. Maybe back in the day there were flamingos. So hopefully today the wind picks up, it's supposed to pick up, I, I think starting from the east and then shifting to the northeast or vice versa, something like that. So we're gonna try to make a bunch of progress east and we decided to go through Florida Bay. The challenge with going through Florida Bay is that it's very, very, very shallow. So through certain spots, you have to make sure you're on these very narrow channels um, and in other parts of it it's still shallow but deep enough to be able to sail so that's the challenge and then the other challenge of course is if there's a east we're going basically directly east so if there's an easterly component of the wind it's just going to make paddling into it challenging or sailing into it challenging too especially because in those narrow channels we can't really tack can only do that in some of the bays here and there so we'll see pedal 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 your way pedal your way through the bay and Sierra's continues to make up songs to keep us both entertained. Look how shallow it is. So hopefully we get a little push from the incoming tide. 
So it looked like yesterday, yesterday we didn't have any service and before that we could look at the tracker to see like who was kind of around us. And I kind of assumed that we had like blown by a bunch of people yesterday when we were surfing. But I think us stopping and sleeping hurt us really bad. <laughs> because they said everybody's probably at the finish already when we were snoozing. <laughs> but it's okay, we had fun. We enjoyed our full moon camp, right? Yeah, it was a yeah the best camping so far, I think, of the race. We just wanted to do this to say we did it. And we finished. We certainly didn't need to win it, and we're just having fun. Here it is, Florida Bay, people. I think it's going to be a lot of mangrove islands and shallow water. So those are the markers that mark these routes in through Florida Bay. We didn't quite know what to expect in Florida Bay because if you look on the chart, it is ridiculously shallow. It looks like all you see is like one, two, three feet all across the bay. After talking to a bunch of people, like it seems pretty straightforward. If you you just follow these routes, you follow the, uh, what are we at right now? I remember a Jimmy and I remember a tin can. and I, remember... I think we're in tin can right now. And I remember a twisty. So if you just follow these routes, um, even at low tide, you're generally good, um, at least in a shallower draft boat like we have. The only things we have to worry about right now are the rudder and Sierra's pedal drives that stick down. I don't know, maybe we're a total of two feet deep to the bottom of those things. Daggerboard's up right now, of course, because we're not sailing at all because there's not a breath of wind. But then in between these routes, there are these other mini bays that kind of open up and get a little bit deeper. The only factor is that if we do have a breeze, we're kind of limited to these routes when we're going through them and we just can't really go outside these channels. And then when we get to the other bays, we can kind of put the daggerboard down and tack a little if we want to, if we have to. But those are the markers marking these channels. They're obviously not like your typical red and green markers. They're just two like four by fours with some of them have little arrows to point what side you stay on of that marker. It's so quiet today compared to every other day. Like every other day it's been pretty windy or like boats going by, but it's quiet, calm getting pretty hot and we're just paddling away until the breeze picks up. All right, we got a little breeze just starting to fill in. It's actually from the pretty f far from the south, which is really good for us right now, especially if it's going to turn from the east, but it's just man, just a little breeze makes this boat go faster than we're paddling it and <laughs> Isn't it funny that if we're only paddling, I don't know what we're actually paddling, but if we're only paddling one and a half knots, sailing at three knots, which seems so slow, gets us there in double the time. Yeah, and it actually feels a, little, a lot faster compared to our one knot. How you doing? Just zooming along here. <laughs> it's cool seeing all the shark fins with them just cruising on the shallows. Oh, this way a tarpon. How do you know it was a tarpon? Because I thought I could see it. I don't want to jinx it, but we've been getting really lucky with this south wind today. The east wind's been holding off and the south wind has been beautiful, just pushing us exactly in the direction we need to go. And being able to sail through these narrow channels has been awesome instead of having to paddle through them. You can hug this one real tight, aim right for it. Through the markers we go, to the markers we go. <laughs> I might have to help you paddle through this next one. We have this beautiful little breeze, but it's being blocked like by this incredibly shallow water. So, so we're just sailing in like this glassy water and with this nice little breeze still, it's oh, so neat. And cruising too. Our luck ran out. 
when it's starting to fill in against us. So we're just motor sailing up to this channel. Take a hard left and we'll have some good sailing wind for a little bit and then maybe be tacking into Key Largo. We're like 10 miles away as the crow flies. Maybe another mile taking the different channels plus whatever we have to add for tacking or paddle pedal straight into it. We'll see. And we're sailing again. Straight down. Manatee, what's called? Manatee cut or manatee pass. So. I think we got a little bit of current with us too. You still got way more depth right here. Well, they say there's one black wall in every race. The black wall just hit us and that was so scary. We are about four miles from the finish and we were making our way. I saw the black wall. I was hoping it wasn't gonna come to us, but we noticed it coming to us because we were looking for the cell phone tower that was blinking red and all of a sudden it just disappeared. It disappeared behind a thick wall of rain and strong wind. At least 30, 40 knots. At least 30 knots. I'm ready to be done. So close. And yet so far. <laughs> Last pack into the finish. We normally get pizza when we arrive somewhere, but nowhere is open, so we have done it. And we just got to our hotel room. Luckily, we booked just here now. Luckily, they had to open because we didn't have any reservations because we didn't know we were going we to get here. But that was the longest 10 miles of my entire life, which probably ended up turning into what, like 20 miles? You took a water <laughs> bottle shower the other day, but I'm going to take the first shower I've had in five days. <laughs> and you're going to take another one. And then we're gonna sleep for a while. Luckily, my dad is so nice that he's coming to get us in the morning and bring us to Jetty. Because I miss her. Good night, people. We missed you. We missed you so much. Oh, we missed you, little dog. Good girl.